Hello, just a short video today. I've had man flu all week, so this is about all I can muster up. Anyway, the TC1. I thought I'd show you this uh, battery upgrade that I've performed on the TC1. I use this component tester as you've watched my videos. I've used it, I use it a lot. I use it to obviously test the power transistors as you see here, but I also use it to check things like diode resistors, tra other sorts of transistors, MOSFETs, um, and it can even be used as you can see there. It's got an infrared detector. It can be used for that, but the biggest problem I find with it is the battery now opening up the case of the unit you can see here the battery inside it is only 350 milliamp per hours um, and you can see the battery protection circuit in there so I wanted to up that a bit but I wanted to give it a significantly more capacity than just 350 milliamp per hours in reality it's 250 milliamp per hours probably 200 um, so what I've done I've modeled an exact replica of the case here and I decided to obviously extend it so we could fit, um, you know, a bigger battery cell in there and not a flat pouch cell either, a, a proper 18650 type battery. So I modeled up the original case there as an exact reference with the, the end plates in at either end. And then I looked at the uh, 18650 battery and I had some in stock. Um, now, if you use a battery, an 18650 battery, you need to use them as I've shown there with the battery protection in. If it hasn't got battery protection, you can buy the little boards to actually fit inside there to protect the battery from over and under discharge. Um, so I designed this to actually take two 18650 cells and with some little clamps there in the middle to clamp it down. You can I've shown these brass inserts which you can use to, uh, you can just use your soldering iron to drive those into the holes to actually secure the clamps which I've shown there over the the top of the cells um, or, although an M3 bolt will just go straight in and I'm mentioning this because I'm going to make these files available to you guys uh, for a download if you want to make one of these yourself so it didn't take too long to print at point two resolution on the printer there and I think you can uh, see there it's come out pretty decent and um, it's certainly good enough for the you know for, for the task of being the underside of the unit anyway so I was pleased with how it came out I took the JST connector off of the the, uh, the other battery and then just soldered it either ends to the cell that I had here in stock I think I got this from one of these torches you know these uh, cheap flashlight type thing and this is a 2600 milliamp per hour battery now as I've already mentioned you could put two in parallel to give you literally five amp hours which would run this thing for a very long time. It draws about 250 milliamps when it's actually running. So this just this modification alone would, would probably ensure that it run um, for a good a good 10 hours uh, <laughs> solidly. So uh, that's be quite interesting to see how it goes and here's the back of the board. Um, now you might notice this differs from the design in the CAD. I did actually change it on the CAD. I moved the brackets in towards the center because I was having problems with that battery clip hitting the brackets. So I managed to get it to fit on mine but I changed it on the actual final one. And uh, I had to do a little bit of messing around with these end plates to get them to fit, but they do fit on the standard unit. And as you can see here, when it's offered up, it all fits together rather nicely. And you can use the original screws on the underside. You've still got access to your USB port uh, and, and, and it doesn't take long to print. It took a couple of hours to print all the parts involved here. And like I say, there's the original screws, which you can just drop back in and screw it up tight. So, um, yeah, here's the specs of what it will actually do. I'm going to roll them up on the screen for you while we power this on and just test it there and i've tested that the um the battery does cut off it cuts off fairly conservatively at about 4.15 volts which is a bit safer than i would like I and mean, you could probably get a bit more capacity if it went up a bit but um to be honest i'd rather err on the side of caution and it's going to give me a massive amount of runtime on this thing i'll probably probably only have to charge it up once in a blue moon which is what i wanted whereas before it was always seeming to go i'd be you know doing a cb and i was always having to charge it and plug the lead in which um i just found a little bit annoying it's the only downside i could find with this meter because it is a very cheap meter and it's a very popular meter so as i've already said there if um if you are looking at uh, if you've got one of these and you want to do this mod i'll leave a link in the description to where you can get those files a google drive I find these uh, testers really, really useful. And as I've said there, uh, 118650 should give you about 10 hours solid runtime. And if you really want to, because like I say, you can double them up. 
and so i hope some of you find this useful like i say i did look at putting a pouch uh, cell in there but even to get a bit more capacity it still wouldn't fit uh, inside the unit so go with something the 18650s are cheap and readily available and if you haven't got one with the built-in battery protection then you can just add the little board and you do need to add that in in though i need to, to mention that because if you don't you could have problems so uh, please ensure that you do that so i hope you found this useful and uh, i'll be back to full operation hopefully next week take care please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one